This is not a drill. We are at condition 10. What's up, folks? King Retro here. Today, we're going to talk about five mistakes die cast collectors make when they first start into the hobby. Now, for this video, I'm going to specifically talk about the 164 scale, but this, the five points I'm going to mention today also apply on other scales as well. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. Okay, number five, not setting a budget. This is probably the trickiest point to deal with when you first start into the hobby. And this is still a problem for many veteran collectors to this day. Not setting a budget could be catastrophic for many reasons. Now, the amount of money you put away when you collect diecast depends highly on your life situation. For example, if you are a student, you are living in a parent home, you're not having a lot of duties to do, or don't have a lot of bills to pay, and on the side you have a little job that makes you a nice little income, then things might be easier for you to handle. On the opposite way, if you are middle-aged and married, having three kids and a wife to satisfy, if you know what I mean, and having a ton of jobs to do and a ton of bills to pay, then things might be a little bit more complicated to deal with, if you know what I mean. So, the best thing you can do when you first start collecting is to fix a maximum amount of money per month on your diecast spendings. Choose an amount you're comfortable with. It can be $100, $200, $300, depends on your life situation. And make sure you keep tracks of everything you buy during that month. Where you buy it, when you buy it, and what did you buy. Could be on Amazon, could be on eBay, your supermarket, your Walmart, a collector show, doesn't matter, write it down. And make sure you keep track and the historic of everything you buy. This way, your personal finance will be in much better health and you will enjoy better collecting. All right, number four. Okay, number four, collecting for the wrong reasons. If you're getting into this hobby for the wrong reasons, you're not going to enjoy your experience as a diecast collector. One of the most obvious reasons will be to collect for value. Now, don't kill me in the comment section down below yet. I will get to that point. Now, if your main goal is to make money in this hobby, I'm telling you right now, you're running completely into the ditch at full speed. Let me explain something. The value of diecast car in the diecast market are determined by supply and demand, just like everything in the capitalism world. Now, I'm gonna sit a very popular and famous collector in the channel, and uh, it made a very valid point, this citation. Let's hear him. Now, prices are all about supply and demand. If there is a million of them out there, you're not going to get a lot of money for them. If there's two of them out there and you got a million people wanting them, you're going to get a lot of money. Less supply, more demand. Now, all of these cars from 96, 97, 98, 99, all the way up, I've been finding the people that did buy them by the hundreds, by the thousands, they want to dump them. Everything today in diecast market is mass produced. Even the premium stuff like Greenlight, Auto Well, and Johnny Lightning, cars are massly produced by thousands and thousands of thousands. So these cars are never going to be rare. What made diecast car, the vintage ones from the 60s, valuable is because back in the day, the kids opened the cars, they play with them, they get it crushed, uh, they rip the paint off, they damage them, they play with them. So finding these cars today in mint condition, it's very, very difficult. So this is why, for example, the Hot Wheels Red Line from the 1968-1972 years are so expensive to get in mint condition. E even more expensive still in the package. Because back in the day, the kids played with them. So that was make them valuable. Now today, maybe some cars are going to take value in the future because they might going to become more desirable. Like example, the BMW I showed you earlier, this car might be, become more desirable in the future because it's a popular car for coming from a popular video game. So these cars, they might take a bit of value, but it's not true, they're never going to be rare, just like the vintage Red Redline. Now, I'm not saying that collecting for value is bad, okay? What I'm telling you is before you go after the value, you should take more experience in the diecast community. You know, talk with other collectors, get experience from them, and maybe with the years ahead, you will learn some new stuff, 
you will also learn by buying some cars and finding them at the stores interacting with other collectors and you will also be able to make you your own opinion on what's valuable and what's not and also keep in mind something every single dollar you're spending on your diecast collector on your diecast collection excuse me you will most likely never gonna get it back okay so if you're getting into this hobby don't collect for money I will say call it for what you like but I will get to that later in the video all right let's move to number three one last thing sometimes when I speak to younger collectors or newer collectors they come to say to me hey King what should I collect and I respond to them I'll tell them what you like you know uh, do you like cars and sometimes they say no what okay but if you don't like cars why do you collect them I just don't understand sometimes collectors they get into the hobby but they don't have any interest in cars now I'm not saying that you have to be a die hard car fan to be out there maybe you can just you like collect cars because you want to play them on the track for example or you remember them because back then when you were a kid you play with them but sometimes some newer collectors they get into the hobby but they seem completely clueless you know they they don't have interest in cars and they just get in because oh I want to collect it because I, I want to make money but you know folks there's plenty of stuff to collect out there okay not just diecast cars you have your figurines you got your Legos you got your vintage ad you got tons of stuff to collect so what are you doing this you know explore other stuff if you're not interested in diecast cars Maybe you should try something else. Maybe you will. Oh, maybe I was a, a die-hard fan of GI Joes. Okay, go ahead. There's a massive amount of GI Joes out there. Uh, or you're saying to me, oh yeah, I really dig the vintage construction stuff, the Tonka stuff. Go for the Tonkas, but don't go for diecast cars. You know what I mean? Tell it what you like. That's what's important here. That's what's matter. All right, number three. Okay, number three. Going after every set every color every variation on day one okay folks I don't want to discourage you but if you're just taking Hot Wheels and over the past 40 years there's thousands and thousands and thousands of variations there's hundreds of different sets there's enormous amounts of variations wheels paint job uh, tempo work it's crazy so if you go after everything on day one, you're gonna lose your mind. I'm telling you right now. I mean, this is a giant mess of variation and stuff out there. Okay, and don't be hard on yourself. You don't have to be a completist on day one. And in fact, you will notice in there many, many different sets and variations. There might be some cars that you don't even care for. Okay. For example, Hot Wheels, they often release a uh, five-pack. In the five-pack, there's three or four cars that are fantasy cars. There's only one car that is licensed and decent for some people. So you don't have to have the complete five-pack. You can just keep it and wait for better release. And same for the car culture set for uh, other series also. Same thing for Matchbox. Can be the same thing for Greenlight. Greenlight, they often have a lot of... The six series, you have a lot of uh, different um, package, you know. So, <laughs> so the best thing you can do before going after everything on day one is first start with what you like. Okay, what's your personal taste? Focus on that. For example, if you're a very die-hard Honda guy, go after the Hondas, the Civics, the uh, Accor. The sports car, the other ones. I'm not a big uh, GDM guy, as you can see. But focus on your your personal taste first, okay? If you're a muscle car guy, there's plenty of stuff to collect out there. You have GM, Ford, Dodge, Chrysler, Plymouth. Okay, sky's the limit. Same thing for the exotic car guys. You have Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bugattis. You got Porsche. You got Jaguars. Okay, the limit is nowhere to be seen so 
when you first start collecting, focus first on what your personal tastes are. That will be much better. This way, you will also be able to respect your budget every single month and not go over it too easily. And also, you will have a better uh, appreciation of your days to go hunting if you're targeting a specific stuff in, uh, instead of targeting a wide variety of mess. You know what I mean? All right, let's jump to number two. At number two, we have only collecting one brand of diecast cars. <sighs> Open your horizon. There is a lot of different brands out there to collect, okay? And many other different levels of quality, of details, of different pieces, opening parts, paint job type of cars, okay? So don't stick to one brand. Open your horizons. Explore what's available to you, okay? And uh, often companies they offer some very dope stuff with their cars, okay? They offer you mini figures, they offer a little garage, little diorama sets, you know, like the um, I know Green Knight offer little, little police stations you can park your diecast police cars on, and uh, Johnny Lightning they also have a special diorama for Christine car, for example. So, you know. Explore the horizons, and there's a lot of different diecasts out there to uh, that deserves to be explored and discovered. One of them is Mini GT. Mini GT have fantastic quality. They have a lot of different variations and a variety of castings, especially the European stuff. But there's also other brands like uh, Tomica Limited Vintage. If you're a die-hard fan of uh, Japanese cars, they make some very very realistic and detailed mall. And if you're a die-hard truck guy like me, I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, die-cast promotion, that's the way to go. Especially if you like those big rigs. If you like police cars, green lights there. So, you know, don't stick to one brand. I know a lot of people, they falsely believe that the only one brand out there to collect is Hot Wheels. Because, you know, Hot oh, Wheels because the most popular, they're, they're valuable, and everybody's going after them. No, just no. Hot Wheels getting surpassed by pretty much everybody else now these days. And I don't want to bash Hot Wheels, okay? That's not the point of this video. But I'm just telling people, you know, explore the horizons. Don't stick to one brand. There's a lot of cool stuff out there to collect. So don't be afraid to explore the different options out there that's available to you in a diecast world. And don't be afraid to do so. And unfortunately, a lot of people are falling to the same trap over and over again, thinking that, for example, oh, no, I will is the most popular brand out there. This must be the, the best stuff they are producing, you know, the most detailed, wow. No, no, that's not true. And I don't want to bash our wheels, but our wheels getting surpassed by everybody else today in the standard competition. You no, know, we get brands like Mini GT that have fantastic details for the European cars. Tomica Limited Vintage, if you're a very dark hard fan of Japanese cars, that's the brand to go. If you like uh, diecast uh, trucks, semi trucks, not if you can see it, but here, diecast promotion, they have the absolute best detail for semi trucks. If you like emergency vehicle with Matchbox, they have a lot of different brands out there, uh, different uh, models out there to collect. You also have some premium stuff like uh, Code 3 collectibles. They make fantastic fire trucks. Yes, they're expensive, but you know, explore the different options available out there. Oh yeah, and don't forget the uh, more off brands out there, like the vintage stuff like Yatming, Playart, uh, Zilmex, and some other brands like Kidco, because sometimes these brands, they uh, hide some uh, very nice little jewels and very nice cool stuff so make sure you take a good look at them majorette majorette's one of my favorite brand in the yikas world and the they pretty much stick to what they were back in the days so with the opening parts the suspension the level of details so i really like this brand so open your horizon <coughs> okay <coughs> excuse me all right let's jump to number one at number one the most infuriating point i see and the most biggest mistake that people make when they first start collecting diecasts 
is to not collect what they like. I mean... Sometimes newer collectors tend to collect the same way as the others do. Uh, they get sucked into a perspective show often by the big collectors or the influencers of how you should collect, what's gonna be valuable, or what's popular and what you should collect and etc etc etc. If you're doing this, you're doing two mistakes. First, you are following the group, which is not very good. And second, you're leaving behind a bit of your personality, a touch of your personality. So if you're getting aboard with us, Make sure you collect what you like. It doesn't matter the opinions of the others, okay? This is crucial for not only your happiness, but the good wealth of your collection also. Because in my book, every collection in the world can have a huge potential of a very rich wealth. Now, plus, don't get afraid to be judged by the other collectors, okay? Screw them. This is your collection. You're the boss. You decide what you want to collect, all right? So, if you want to collect a particular type of vehicle, or a particular brand, don't let anybody stop you. For example, back in the day, I used to have a friend of mine that was a big time fan of the Mini Coopers and the small European sports cars. And he was afraid of getting judged by the others by his liking. I was saying to him, man, just collect what you like. You don't have to care about the opinions of the others. If you like Mini Coopers, go for it. Anyway, you can also find some very nice and rare examples of different Mini Coopers. They make a lot of different variations, a lot of different um, models, you know, okay? So, what I was basically saying to him is, get off the highway, you know? Try the country hoes. Sometimes you can find some hidden treasures. treasures. So, get off the highway, boys and girls. Try the country roads. There's very often hidden treasures on those back roads. Just like the Duke's boy and Duke's hazard having fun with their General Lee. And if you enjoy collecting Maystones, heck, go for it, okay? Don't let anybody stop you. The same ways if you like Mini Coopers or you like Miatas, you know? Okay? That doesn't matter. And don't forget, Doug DeMiro, the famous uh, car reviewer in YouTube, he likes to collect weird stuff. So you can also take an example on him, you know? He's having fun. Even what he is collecting is not what other peoples are necessarily collecting, you know? So, if you like Japanese cars, go for Japanese cars. If you like trucks, go for trucks. If you like exotic cars, go exotics. If you like American muscle, go for American muscle. If you like a bit of everything, then sky's the limit for you. Anyway, this is pretty much what I was... Uh, <clears throat> anyway, that's pretty much what I have to uh, talk to you about today. So uh, I think Race Grooves have something to say to you folks before we go. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Happy collecting and have fun with your toys. Play with them, that's what they're for. Bye bye. Condition 10. This is not a drill, we are at Condition 10.